join me as we talk all things true crime. And shattered. Four year old. The parents have called in and us, but the mother has went through a wall, came out, now they can't find her. Turn it over to another agency. Chad, where are Lori's kids? They've been missing for four months. You have nothing to say? Four were stabbed multiple times and were likely asleep during the attack. Some had defensive wounds. Most of them had just like one that was the lethal uh, stab wound. Oh, what a tangled web we weave. Once I told a lie, then I told my family. I, I had to keep lying. I'm sure I mean, is a demon. We haven't cleared anybody. Hey, everybody. Let me know if you can hear me. Hello, Florida Bass Fishing. Hi, Johnny. House Huddle, Unravel. Tony's here. Both the Tonys are here. Hi, everybody. Hi, Adrian. So I'm not going on camera. I've been sick all week. I didn't even think this live stream was going to happen. Fever of 102. So I'm just kind of staying off camera and trucking through this because I did not want to miss um, our Watts Thursdays. So thank you all for being here. Hit that like button if you haven't done so. Hi, Zoe. And um, subscribe if you haven't done so already. So let's let me just make sure everything's... Um, connected properly. I want to make sure, I know you guys said the sound is good. I just want to make sure the connection is good. We're going to go through some stuff um, from the discovery as well as some um, body cam footage. So one second, guys, give me a sec. Okay, thank you. While I was just checking to make sure everything was connected properly, because I just don't want to continue if there was going to be a problem. So thank you guys so much. Yep, that's fine. Thank you. All right. So let's start with some text message between Shanann and her friends, which is on the thumbnail. She says, I'm trying to go with the flow. He's kind of being Chris. Her friend says, OMG, thank God. I love you guys so much and I know you will be okay. But he's still very distant still. Having a boy is a blessing. That's what he wanted. Tonight has been the best talk yet. Sorry, I was trying to give him full attention. He's out for a run now. And the reason why I just kind of pointed out on the thumbnail, the, the part where she says that he was out for a run, there is some Facebook um, live streams with Shanann where she kind of, you know, will say things like, oh, he's out for a run. And it seemed like that kind of stuff happened um, near the end of 2017. I don't know if there's any correlation between the time that Nicole Kessinger texted him, but I, I've always kind of theorized that maybe when he was out for a run, he was meeting up with NK. Again, that's just my opinion and speculation. Um, I'm just looking for something else. Okay, so the thing that I really wanted to talk to you guys about is a tip that was called in from the neighbor, and it took me a minute to find this tip, um, the video of it at least, because there's body cam footage where they go door to door. Um, and my my moderator, I, I modded her because of this. <laughs> Maligator helped me out with um, finding the video. So here is the supplemental report in the discovery files. And it's from uh, Officer Perez, I, Ivan Perez. And it says, 8-14-2018 at approximately 1910 hours, I assisted Officer Lines with canvassing the neighborhood. I spoke with a woman who resided at 
6328 Steeple Rock Dive. I think it's supposed to say drive. I asked her if she reviewed the flyers officers had left on her door and if she happened to know the Watts family. She stated she was aware of the situation but did not know the family. The woman stated she had not seen anything suspicious around the neighborhood other than an older gray Ford truck stop to dump out his beer can and then later come back to retrieve it. This was the only house I contacted before getting called away to handle other calls for service. Nothing further. So again, they didn't notice anything suspicious except, now remember Betty's tip that she saw an older gray truck. Now when they say Ford, I personally don't put too much weight on somebody's um, eyewitness of a vehicle type. Um, I think that that's something that people get wrong a lot. So I think that it's very likely that Betty and this um, neighbor saw the same older gray truck. So I don't want to get too hung up on the aspect of the Ford because we know that the mistress was linked to an older gray truck that was sm smaller in size than Chris's work truck. So now I want to go to the body cam that shows this. And thank you, Nature Rocks, for becoming a member. I really appreciate you very much. And hello, Angie. It's good to see you. And hello, Christina. Good to see you, too. Okay. And yeah, no problem. I, I Today is the first day I didn't have like 100 or 102 fever. So I figured as, as long as I laid low a little bit today, I'd be okay for... I don't know if I'll be on for two hours, but I'm here. Now, I don't think there's any sound at this moment. They haven't turned their body cam um, sound on. So just give it a second. Hopefully get some sound. Now, this is the video of the tip I just read from um, the discovery files. It's so loud. Feel rain. Acid rain. Either sweat or gel. Yeah, I really burnt. Hello. Hi there. How are you doing, man? Good. How are you doing? President of the Frederick Police Department. This is Officer Lyons. Hi. Hi. Sorry, I haven't everything drip off. I know. Out. <laughs> uh, we were wondering if you had a chance to review that flyer that we had set uh, down in your. Yeah, I've been kind of following what's going on. Okay. Oh, the media. So, yeah. Do you well, know the family at all? I don't know the family at all. Do you? Are you just normally gone during the day? Uh, I am, me and my husband both work during the day, my oldest son's here during the day. Um, anything unusual the last couple of days, even the last couple of weeks that you guys have noticed? Uh, we just have like the break-ins in the neighborhood, which right. you guys know of. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, we were gone the weekend. Okay, so she said the break-ins in the neighborhood, which you guys know of. So I don't know if you guys were there for a live stream. If you if you missed it, you'd have to go back um, a couple of them. We brought up uh, screenshots from like a neighborhood app, an app that when you live in a neighborhood, you can kind of post and, and everyone that lives, it's like a community page. And we went through it and we talked about how people were saying that their bike was stolen. And then we talked about how Shanann had posted about Chris's truck. Um, for sure was broken into because a lot of times we wondered if that was just a lie that Chris made up to tell Nate to figure out where his camera was positioned. But we found out going through that uh, neighborhood app that it, it was something that was really happening. So when she references the break-ins that were taking place, we kind of have a lot more context to that now that we've gone through proof that, you know, there were things going on in the neighborhood that were just out of the norm. And thank you everyone for wishing me well in the comments. I appreciate it. Before last, we're down in Denison. I haven't noticed anything weird. Okay. I mean, tonight we noticed something weird, which a couple of you guys were sitting down here in this great truck. He like dumps out his beer can. 
and then it, like, zooms it there, goes down around the block, comes back to sit up, and, like, kind of turns out here. We're like, what is that about? Is it a gray truck? Yeah, he got his license plate. Did you, not, did you call it in? No. Mm-hmm. You're not going to have it still? Yeah. yeah. So I was like, I you're going to now, I don't know if we hear the license plate, but hold on. And although I don't even know if we have the license plate for the truck that belonged to the mistress and her family. So I don't know if there's a way to kind of compare. Your beer can and you're going to come back for it when the cops are sitting right there. Right. Uh, that was weird. <laughs> yes. Welcome to our world. Yeah. Um, and A-N-J. Then, and my, 822. Uh, did you have a good look at the guy or no? Yeah. Uh, he... Roughly. If he did, it was fine. He had like a backwards cap on. Yeah. Like a hoodie. Yeah, maybe... Old on his the right nail. Okay. Did the truck say anything on it? Uh, it was a gray truck with a camper shell. It was a- so the camper shell, to me, is key, I think. Um, I believe they go on to describe the camper shell as being like similar color to the gray truck, which is different than the camper shell we see in the truck that the mistress owned. Um, I'm trying to find the picture of the gray truck the mistress owned so I can just show you guys. But again, I mean, you guys know, for those who follow true crime, eyewitness accounts, you know, sometimes you can rely on them, but at the same time, you kind of have to take it with a grain of salt. So they describe it as having a camper shell, which is huge because as we see here, this was a truck that was linked to, ignore Betty for a second, um, the mistress. And the, the way that we linked it was when the case first broke, for those who don't know, you know, and we were looking into the mistress, people pulled up uh, public files and found out that she owned a company and the company, some LLC, um, Satya, I think it was called something to do with like yoga and stuff. Um, so when you look up the, the address of the company that she owned on Google Maps, this is how that image of a gray truck is being linked to the mistress. So camper shell. Now we have two neighbors that describe this smaller truck. This neighbor is saying that a white male drank from a beer can, tossed it out the window, and then drove around and decided to come back and retrieve the can. So, you know, this family themselves were like, that's weird. So the son wrote down the uh, license plate number. They have a description of a white male, backwards hat on. We know... (laughs) A lot of guys out there like to wear their hats backwards. Um, there are some guys in connection to Chris who we have seen with backward hats on. I'll just leave it at that. And actually, I believe the one white male with a um, backwards hat on is linked to the mistress. So again, it's just why exactly would somebody toss a can out the window and then drive back and go and retrieve it? Um, strange thing to do when there's a murder case going on in the same neighborhood. Ford. The Ford? Yeah. Ford. Mm-hmm. Did they have the camper shell? What, what color was it? The no. camper shell? Uh-huh. It was the same window? color as his yeah, car. Yeah, it was like gray too. It was gray. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Was that was the only weird thing we saw tonight. We're like, what? Yeah. Newer, older? Uh, it was an older model Ford. Older Not model Not one of the newer ones. Okay. Um, and then my, my neighbor across the street, she's got the cameras on her house. I'm sure yeah. you guys have talked to her. Yeah, they've already, um, we had been out here in several rounds today, already gone down the entire other side. Oh, okay. We're just rechecking the re-checking people that weren't home when we oh, get okay. out first week. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, like like she said, we're just seeing if uh, you noticed anything weird in between hand or, you know, any little detail would help out. You mm-hmm. saw him walking out, yeah, um, I mean, anything like that. I haven't seen anything. Unfortunately. Hey, Sarge. Okay. Um, so you do you have the flyer? Am I already at the work? Do you see anything? Do you hear anything? Uh, you I am with Mandy right now helping out with his uh, camera. Um, he's got a whole, whole team of people working with on this. Manly? Um, but definitely give a shout out to that number this summer. Yeah, we're uh, uh, pre-cameraing so the, 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 the area. Does that have anything to do with anything or just another? Yeah, we're 
Yeah. So, <laughs> good job on you. So. I, and I don't think, I've never seen that truck in the neighborhood that I know no. of. Is there something else? So, uh, uh, so while this officer, and thank you, Johnny, for the tea, and here's some tea for everybody, ladies and gents. Um, while he's talking on the phone, you can kind of hear them talking um, together, the the, mo the mother and the female officer. And she says, I've never seen that truck in the neighborhood before. So again, that's another thing I think is noteworthy. You know, the, when you're in a neighborhood, I mean, I've only been in my neighborhood, not even a year. And I feel like I would know if there was like a, an out of place um, vehicle kind of circling around. Um, I don't know how you guys are as far as being observant. I, I'm constantly looking out my like window and just kind of like, well, what's going on out here? We have a ring camera. Um, we're in the know. We have one of those neighborhood apps as well. And we kind of just, you know, keep up with things. And hello, Dustin and S. Hackett, everyone else joining. Um, thank you, Sherry, for the super sticker. I really appreciate you very, very much. And yeah, so I just want to hear that again, kind of in the background. You can hear her. She's never seen it before. See if that has anything to do with anything or just another. Yeah, very normal. Yes. Yeah. So, good job on you. So. And I don't think, I've never seen that truck in the neighborhood that I know of. No. Is there something else so uh, you guys used to do? Yeah, there yeah. is. I mean, and that's the thing, too, is, I mean, you kind of see kind of weird people in the neighborhood right now with the construction, and you're like, is it construction workers or right. is it something yeah. else? Yeah, that'll be you fine. You don't know. With you. Yep. Because we, we saw a group of four gentlemen. Yeah. I'll call them and see where they want me. Yeah. I mean, they all look like they're all like car oh, okay. <laughs> And that's how I feel about it, Debbie. We have two neighbors pointing out a, an out of place, um, gray, smaller, older modeled truck. I don't really believe in coincidences. I don't think that um, it has anything to do with the construction that they're kind of speculating about, too. She's saying, you know, sometimes with the construction, we don't really know. I guess, who's in and out of this neighborhood right now because they were building a lot of houses. Remember, uh, the whole part behind where the Watts house was, people were not living there. It was vacant. So a lot of things could take place back there where, you know, they wouldn't be worried about neighbors watching and all that. And hello, all that glitters and everyone else. It seems like a lot of you guys are saying that you don't believe really much in coincidences. It's just too much at this point. You know, in regards to, you know, Betty, and I seen um, Tony's comment that she wasn't taken serious. A lot of people to this day don't take her eyewitness account serious. And this eyewitness account, I think, just gets brushed over too. So I kind of want to rewind. The weekend before last, we're down in Denison. I haven't noticed anything weird. Okay. I mean, tonight we noticed something weird, which a couple of you guys were sitting down here in this great truck. He mm -hmm. like dumps out his beer can. And then, like, leaves it there, goes down around the block, comes back to sit up and, like, kind of tears out of here. We're like, what is that about? Is it a gray truck? Yeah, he got his license plate. He got, did you call it in? No. Mm -hmm. You're not going to have it still? Yeah. yeah. So, I don't know. If I had seen someone dump a beer can, drive around, and then go back and get the can, I would be super like, what the heck? And that's not even if a murder had taken place in my neighborhood. So add the a aspect of a murder taking place. It almost looks like somebody's trying to hide their DNA. Private neighborhood watch group and a private Facebook page. We have a lot of chat and group pictures. The neighborhood is very aware of anything and anyone coming in. Exactly. So, I, and you know, mothers are very um, aware and this mother seems to be very aware. I mean, even her son writing down the license plate. Uh, they seem to be on top of something that just didn't look right. So I have to kind of go with their gut instincts too, you know. But I just wanted to share that with you guys. I thought that that tip um, from the neighbor kind of aligns with Betty's tip about the small truck. And we'll start there. So I know you guys are pretty much saying that you don't really believe in coincidences and you think that it's tied to things. Um Another thing I can't really stop thinking about since we looked at it live uh, when CDT was on, we stumbled on it live. So it wasn't anything I expected to see. This is the Weld County Office of the District Attorney call detail report. 
And this is where we found this call. Um, Steeple Rock Drive stating that her garbage can is missing and her ADDR is about, oh, her address is about four doors down from the lady who is missing, wondered if it's related. So <laughs> again, another instance of something strange happening right near the house, four houses down from Shanann Watts. At this point, she was just a missing person. Neighbor says, like, my garbage can, <laughs> it's gone. And, you know, I, I don't know why. So she calls it in. I just can't stop thinking about this tip because I just think that a whole whole garbage can going missing that close to the address to me is, is another instance where I'm like, this just can't be like coincidence. The same week of you know, we know that there was other evidence that Chris was throwing out in the body cam footage that we've gone through. And we're like, why is there, a, you know, dolls and toys and sippy cups and stuff like that in their garbage? We never hear any of that mentioned in the evidence files. In the discovery, at least, uh, they might have held on to it or gotten it. But again, Chris was allowed in the house for a whole night, which he had cleaned heavily and was throwing things out. And that's when they found, you know, more sheets in the trash. And that's when they found um, remnants from a vacuum. You know, all of that stuff we never really heard more on. So just another aspect. Um, what exactly would they need to take the neighbor's trash can for? Um, I mean, did they throw something out in the neighbor's trash and then get like paranoid and decide to go back and just get rid of it all? Um why exactly would somebody drink from a beer can, toss it out the window and then drive back and go get it? You know, there's just so many things that seem to have been going on around that time that just doesn't really make sense. House Huddle and guys, if she if you guys are looking for more Watts content, House Huddle and my moderator Unravel have really good um, perspectives on the case, too. No one in law enforcement believes in coincidences, which is what makes this case beyond infuriating. And I just want to kind of weed out things from being, you know, suspicious. Like, did this woman ever find her garbage can? Did it just blow away? Um, we know that Shanann posted a video one time on Facebook and it showed how windy it gets and that there were garbage cans kind of blowing. But we don't know <laughs> if this is related to weather or, you know, like this woman says, doesn't know if it's related. And thank you so much, all that glitters. I really appreciate that super sticker. And Tabby Cat, brown bikini, the fuel of nightmares. <laughs> I know. And honestly, I we are always joking around about the brown bikini, but I it just why would she ever buy that? Um, it's just so many things, Jay and everyone, that it's like, where are the um, missing pieces? Did they leave in those trash cans? Was it the blankets he dumped? Exactly. What, what exactly was in that trash can that got dumped? Wild to think about how surreal this whole case is. And as you uncover more information, the crazier it gets. Chris is unassuming yet somehow killed his family and not alone. I I know. And hello, Mel Mac. Good to see you. It's just too much. It's too much. And the brown bikini makes it that much more that we just can't handle. Yeah. What an awful color for a bikini. <laughs> Only NK. So yeah, this was just another thing that I wanted to kind of reshare with you guys. Another strange occurrence in the neighborhood at the time that was um, going on around the time of the murder uh, before the bodies are even found. Now this, I don't know. So another example of Chris. Now, this was stated to law enforcement. Remember in our last live stream? So here kind of goes along with the whole going for runs. Chris advised Shannon works at home and direct sales. Chris advised he doesn't go for walks. She doesn't go for walks around the area, but he will go for runs. So that was just another example of him kind of talking about running around the neighborhood um, this is with an officer who is one of the first on the scenes. So it's a supplemental report from Officer James. Um, as we go down, he kind of talks about how he had given him a uh, card in case, you know, there was any 
information that he wanted to uh, call him about any updates. And we've seen that in the body cam footage. So I think that this officer is kind of the heavier set one um, with darker hair, I think. So he says, Chris said Shanann told him she was taking the kids to a friend's house, but didn't tell him who. He said she still was in bed when that happened. Chris said it was between 4 and 5 a.m., said he woke up at 4 a.m. Chris said he was passed out when she got home, then woke her up. He said he wanted to have a conversation with her face to face. He said the conversation lasted 30 to 45 minutes. He said he left between 515 and 530. Chris said he went to the location first east of Hudson. He said he was the only one there because one of the other oper operators had an issue there Friday that was left over the weekend. He said he was there to verify the issue to see if he could fix it. Now, this is referring to the leak, the oil leak. He said he went to a pumping unit across the ranch. He advised it was a survey ranch near Rogan, Colorado. Chris said he looked up his water. He loaded up his water bottles, computer, book bag, container with O-rings into his truck. He advised he had an issue with someone who stole trucks out of his um tools out of his truck previously. He said he parked his truck near the neighbors for a few days to see if anyone would try and break in. So then, it, you know, he's just given the um, responding officer the, the rundown. Chris advised me he was in North Carolina for five weeks. Then he went for, she was in North Carolina for five weeks and he went for the six week. He said there was a disconnection and they fell out of love with each other. He said when they were together again, the let the last week, it just wasn't the same. Chris felt like they weren't in love anymore. Chris said he could never be himself or be who he was before he met her. Chris said they had the disconnect once he saw her again and that it wasn't there anymore. Chris said it was totally possible she was seeing somebody else. Chris, when asked if he was seeing somebody else, he slightly lowered his voice and said, nah, I have not done that. Chris said he was going to go to work early to see what's going on. He said if his head wasn't right, he would roll out. So remember the last live stream we talked about um, how I think he kept telling people that he needed to get back to work because he needed to follow through with the explosion plan. Um, and Sandy thought, and she described in our last live stream, we read her statement. She said, Chris keeps making statements that he has to get back to work. I think he's going to dump oil on the bodies. Now, that was her interpretation of it. Um, I just feel like this whole, you know, him telling the officer that he's got it, he's going to go to work and see what's going on. Um, I feel like it really does have to do with the explosion. The only reason why I think that it has nothing to do with, you know, getting rid of evidence or anything like that. Um, is because he's telling the officer where he's going. So I feel like if he was going to go out there and try and cover something up, he he wouldn't be telling the officer this. Like he would have kept it as, you know, only Sandy knowing that he wanted to get back to work. That's just my interpretation of this. I just think it's another example of the sense of urgency Chris had at around that time to kind of get back to the work zone area. And it, it's just very puzzling why he was in such a, a rush and need to get back there. So I don't know how you guys feel about it. Let me know your thoughts, comment below. And then moving on to the next thing I want to share with you guys. Let's see. What's this? Okay. So... When talking about evidence that's just lost forever, um, hang on, let me just X out of some stuff. Okay, so this is another page in the discovery. We've gone over this um, together on CDT's channel years ago, but it kind of falls into the title of the stream, you know, information and, and stuff that we just don't have the answers to. Um, possible evidence gone forever. So this is a supplemental report, I believe it's by CBI. Um, during the briefing, I learned the Watts family had a leased white Lexus SUV, possibly paid for using the car allowance through Shanann's employment with Thrive. And Chris had a white 
I don't know why this says he has a white work truck. It's like a grayish um, used for his employment with Anna Darko. Detective Baumhofer advised he has since learned Chris's work truck had a GPS installed and he was waiting to get the records showing Chris's whereabouts. Detective Baumhofer advised neither Chris or Shanann had a criminal history. Detective Baumhofer advised uniformed officers were in the Watts neighborhood continuing the neighborhood canvas. A short time later, Commander Egan received information that an ununiformed officer in the neighborhood observed Chris packing up what appeared to be blankets and a cooler inside the white Lexus in the garage. So from the moment that they showed up and, you know, execute the um, search warrant that he willingly signed over and allowed them to do, he was under surveillance. So even though they kind of make it seem like, you know, give us a call if you hear anything and, you know, hopefully we hear something soon. He was being watched. So Commander Egon was then informed Chris shut the garage door after packing the car and a vehicle. And then it shows the plate. Showed up at his residence. So after packing up the car, a vehicle with a Colorado license plate showed up at his residence and a male and a female get got out and went inside his residence. So I don't know if this was Nick Thayer and his wife. Um, it never really kind of specifies on this page. Maybe in their interviews, it, it kind of get the connections get um, connected. You guys let me know if you know who this male and female were that came over to the Watts house. After speaking with Detective Baumhover and Commander Egon, I called CBI Intelligence Analysis Jillian Gainley and requested she issue a missing person in, or endangered alert for Shanann, Bella, and Celeste. So basically just going back to, you know, what was Chris loading into the Lexus at that point? Um, why exactly was he loading up a cooler? and blankets, you know, what exactly was that about? <laughs> because when we got all the body cam footage of the Lexus being looked at, none of those items were in it. So that had to have taken place. Okay, so it was the Thayers, thank you. So that had to have been taken place um, after we had seen them, you know, do stuff with the Lexus when they were at the house for the search warrant. Um, they do end up taking the Lexus in for evidence, but I never hear or see on the evidence log anything about this blanket or cooler that was, you know, being loaded up inside of it. You know, what exactly was that about? Why did he feel the need to do that at that time and place? Don't know. You guys let me know your thoughts. All right, let's see. Okay, this next, is this what this is on the screen? Okay, yeah. This next one is just another head scratcher. So this is a supplemental report from, you know, uh, officers who are unmarked and they're, they're watching Chris. So see here, it has like the hours that they're watching and everything that takes place, and it'll be, you know, marked. So here it says 12, 17 hours, uh, 12, 23 on scene, 12, 28. All right. So they're using binoculars and they're, you know, watching him. I observed the following. Voice to text was used to keep notes on police department issued cell phone, then emailed to my work email. The email was printed and placed in the file. Spelling and grammar off due to voice text and inaccuracies on the iPhone. 1223 on scene. 1228. White car parked out front of 2825 Steeple Rock Road facing east. Unknown license plate. Left northbound Steeple Rock. Drive. 1239. Observed white four-door SUV type vehicle. Returned to 2825 Steeple Rock Drive. Did not see occupants get out. So 
you know, there could be so many different types of white four-door SUVs. It could be nothing. Unfortunately, in this case, we know that the Watts own a white SUV and so does the mistress. So I think so too, Tony. She says, I think some of the texts he was receiving at the house was NK possibly telling him what to do. Yeah, what to do, what to say, um, what to clean up, what to maybe put in the Lexus. Um, so here, to me, <laughs> I hate to jump to conclusions, but was this the mistress's car? Was this her SUV? Occupants did not get out. Well, they didn't see them get out at least. And now the only reason why I'm leaning towards that, because if it was nobody, why all of a sudden did the notes stop? So here you can see even scrolling up the hours, you know, um, 12, 17, 12, 23, 12, 28, 12, 39 is when the SUV is observed. Then all of a sudden it drops off skips to 1415 relieved for a restroom break 1420 return to post so the person who's doing the surveillance witnessed a four door white suv vehicle park near the watts house it's not in front of the watts house it's near it um and then all of a sudden their notes drop off now if we scroll down further here he goes on to say, um, you know, other things took place. Let me just read it. 1457, garage door of 2825 Steeple Rock Drive. Can see white Lexus in the garage. Okay, so that wasn't the Watts house, If although this is a while later at 1457. Um, but let's just say it's not the, the Watts because theirs is in the garage. Observed white male short. Beard, gray shirt, and black shorts walk from the front passenger side to the rear of the white Lexus. Open the back hatch and place what appeared to be square bag with pink flowers with white behind the flowers into the back of the SUV. Then proceeded to grab a cloth-like item already in the back of the SUV and place it into the bag. The male then closed the hatch and walked back to the right side of the passenger side of the SUV out of sight, then garage door, then closed the garage door. Garage door reopened, acquired off white license plate. That's the white, that's the license plate number. Um, garage door closed. Information on Lexus given to D Detective Baumhover. So the reason why I just think this is interesting is, you know, here we see received call from Commander Egon to report to, to return to the police department, end of log. So why did the log suddenly just stop after an, a white four-door SUV type vehicle returned to 2825 Steeple Rock Drive, did not see occupants get out? Why did it just drop for that long? I mean, that's more than an hour. All of a sudden, the notes and the logs just drop off. So that, to me, how I, um, right, uh, Nicole Atkinson's car was was a, a sedan, definitely not an SUV. Um, a Toyota 4Runner is a white SUV, and that's what the mistress was driving at the time tampered discovery, like purposely leaving out um, what was, ahem, <laughs> Kessinger, <laughs> exactly, um, purposely leaving out what the notes were. So, you know, would this discovery have been handed over to the defense team if this went to trial and the defense team would have said, you know, we noticed on this one page when he was under surveillance that we get a white four-door SUV vehicle returned to the area and then all of a sudden we were, we're wondering why your log dropped off for a while. And it, you know, all of a sudden you're going to a bathroom break and then you return to your post and then it picks up again. Um, and you can see how repetitive the other logs are. 1415, 1420, 1457, 
1517, um, 1522, 1529. You know, it, it's like real notes taking. So why here after if it if this had dropped off this like this gap in like the log dropped off and it wasn't related to a white four door SUV, I'd be like, oh, you know, not much was going on. But the fact that it has something to do with a white four door SUV and then it drops off for a while, I'm like, I can't help but wonder what really were the logs in between 1239 and 1415 hours. But that's just me. That's me looking at this stuff and wondering like, okay, where the heck is the rest of this logs for this? You know, what happened after this white SUV pulled up? Because we don't see anything after saying it returns. And it seems like those other notes are very detailed in a way that like you can kind of picture the scene. It's it's notes and brief, but uh, did he confess solo sock? I didn't know that. Anyway, so why, you know, for me, I, I feel like the defense team, if they had gotten this log sheet, they would have said, you know, where is the rest of this log? What happened when this white SUV pulled in? And then, you know, all of a sudden your post person is going to the bathroom. So I, I don't know. I feel like there's something missing in between those hours of this uh, surveillance log. That's just my opinion. And... So yeah, Christina, they like changed the format and the names of the roads. So once a case um, took place, they were doing things um, differently in the neighborhood as far as like street names and stuff, because they were adding so many new residents that the neighborhood just isn't the same layout. So if you're going to kind of reference things from the case now, it's it's all confusing. No problem. It's just a problem that we've run into because we're trying to map out the neighborhood and it's totally different nowadays than it was in 2018. They were building stuff in there really quick. Um, yeah, and they, and they took they took away like street names. It was just very, very weird. Very weird case. So moving on from this. Now, I don't know if you guys think this is weird, but I do think. I think that a log, a surveillance log dropping off for that long after seeing a car that looks like the mistresses, to me, that's weird. Okay. What else do I have to share with you guys? So when it comes to the sheet, um... The fitted sheet at Survey, right? In the discovery, it's very limited for the information on the fitted sheet. Yes, it was logged into evidence. Um, it's just, let me just read the part. Um, in the brush to the south of the pad, Detective DeWitt and Commander Borders located what appeared to be a sheet lying on the ground. They still, they took a still photograph of the sheet and upon inspection, it appeared that it was possible that there were unknown objects underneath the sheet. So they're looking at it, um, through the drone information too. And there's, you know, Chris mentioned in his uh, interrogation and his false confession, because we know Shanann didn't kill the girls, um, that there would they would find the girls' extra clothes and toys underneath the sheet. So here they're saying it appeared like it, it could possibly have things underneath it. Detective DeWitt and I approached the sheet from the north, and just inside of the brush, just south of the edge of the gravel pad, we encountered an area of bare dirt that appear to have been recently disturbed. Commanders, Commander Borders and I then approached the street sheet from the south along the fence line of the well site. A closer examination, 
to wait upon re reaching a closer proximity to the she i was able to determine that it was not a lo as large as it had appeared on the video screen of the drone controller and most likely did not have any objects underneath it i noted that the sheet appeared to have been fitted the same print of the flat sheet located in the kitchen trash can during a search of the Watts residence earlier that day. So this is where they log the sheet with the um, black garbage bags that were out there. Um, there's a part, and we've gone through it before, where it talks about the stains on the sheet. And it pretty much doesn't describe it as, you know, urine or fecal matter or um, anything other than dirt. So, and it even says as if it was being dragged. So give me a second because to me that's important because he has made um, claims that when he wrapped her in the sheet and put her in his truck, she defecated and and the children mentioned sorry i know this is gross and graphic the children mentioned that it it smelled like daddy it smells and you know that when they were talking in the prison interview he pretty much said you know they were saying oh because you know she relieved her and he's like yeah i think i think so or something like that um even though he said they described it as like a skunk smell which you know weed smells like skunk but Anyway, so if she relieved herself, if she was asphyxiated, most people after their bladder, um, I can't remember what her bladder or stomach contents were. That'd be something to look up on another live. But here in the discovery, you know, they don't say anything was on the sheet. So that's where I kind of get confused, too, because if it was just dirt and from her being, it appeared that she was dragged in the sheet. Um, that leads me to go along with my theory that she was sedated or taken out of the house um, alive, possibly gunpoint or, like I said, sedation. Um, and that's why there's no bodily fluids, fecal matter, anything like that on the sheet. So let me just find that part where it talks about the stains on it and that it looked like it was from dragging. Okay, so also, besides the black trash bag, the sheet in the rake head that was found, um, those were all logged, of course. Photograph of the stain on the sheet found on the ground. Um, sorry, guys. I know it's on this page, but trust me, it just describes the stains on the sheet as looking as dirt only and that it from when it was dragged. Like it appeared that it had been from somebody being dragged. <sighs> hmm. How about I switch up the screen and look for that part while we play a video too? Because I can still look for it while we kind of change it up. So what I want to show, of course, is the fitted sheet. Um, very puzzling why that was out there. Uh, you know, just doesn't really make sense. So that's a fitted sheet. Nothing was lying under it. Like Chris claimed you would find toys and extra clothing. I don't even know why there would be extra clothing for the kids. They left in their pajamas. I'm very confused by him stating that. Um, the toys were never found. All right. While I look for that verbiage in the discovery, let's play. Now, the reason why I'm playing this is people think that the evidence locker shows the sheet having like bodily fluids and, and it's decomp like seepage from Shanann, but it's not the fitted sheet. Before they put her in the body bed, they put her in the coroner sheet. So the coroner sheet is supposed to um, keep evidence, you know, better, I guess. 
um, instead of just putting her body right from the ground to the um, body bag, it, she was wrapped in a coroner sheet. So, but people get confused. So the reason why I'm showing this is I'm saying this is the coroner sheet, which was hung in evidence and, you know, with her shirt, with her bra, with her underwear and a bunch of dirt that they collected around her body too. And yeah, that the that's the thing is the other stuff on the sheet is from uh, decomposition. So if you ever see pictures of like death scenes, even if people die of natural causes, sometimes like, I don't know, maybe it's just the Facebook groups I'm in, like about science and stuff. It'll show like, oh, this person was sitting in this chair for a couple of days and this is what it looked like. And it, it's just like, it's what happens for like decomposition. So they took her out of the ground and then they did the autopsy days later. Um, the date of this evidence locker, maybe they'll say it on the video. I can't remember it. Maybe somebody in chat remembers. I, I want to say it was Friday, maybe Thursday. Because he confesses Wednesday night. Yeah, it's fluids from her body. And that's the thing, too, is we don't ever find out, you know, was there other DNA found on, you know, her? Was there uh, anything found in that dirt around them? Around her, I should say. Well, Nico, too. But it's just, I'm just showing this to kind of um, clarify. Another thing, too, that I've always wondered about this footage is why don't they have the fitted sheet being hung? Like, I get it that, you know, her shirt, her bra, her underwear were, you know, directly on top of her, like very closely to, you know, she's, the autopsy is a huge piece of evidence, you know, so they want to keep this stuff kind of separate from other things, because obviously they didn't put um, other things that they found out this site in this scene either. It's only her clothing and what was like touching her, like uh, the coroner sheet. But if that fitted sheet was wrapped around her for a while and we're to assume, like the district attorney said, that she died at the house, why I'm confused why they never show that in this video. And then in the discovery pages, if you look up fitted sheet, which is what I'm scrolling through when I'm trying to find what I'm trying to find for you guys, um, it's just why is it, you don't hear about it? Like it gets logged with the rake. And I guess we found out in our last live stream that we don't ever hear about the rake handle or anything like that. Whose handprints were on it, whose touch DNA. We never hear about it because everything all everything got stopped and the process of their lab work and everything like that gets halted as soon as he signs a plea deal in November. So mid-August, the stuff is found, the case, you know, breaks. And by November, they just stop doing things. And as we're seeing in other cases, you know, a toxicology report is taken four to six weeks, sometimes months, depending on how big, you know, the agency or the um, department is. Uh, so here, you know, they were just getting started. So I love when people leave the comments like, you know, he, there's no evidence that points to anyone else. That's why no one else got arrested. It's like, honey, they stopped investigating when he signed the plea deal. Like Tammy, Agent Tammy literally says that, you know, we, he stopped the clock. We didn't get to do everything that we needed to do. We didn't get to interview everybody that we needed to interview. Um, and I take everything um, as, you know, what it is. And it seems to me like, law enforcement were pretty much at like full speed and then all of a sudden they get haltered and halted and they get you know stopped in their investigation so again let me just play this while i look for that one quote it really was in fact i'll show you something strange too on that page that i found too basically it has um there were a lot of agencies involved, like Frederick responded to the 911 call because that's where Chris lived. So we get reports in the discovery files from all these, you know, CBI, FBI, Frederick, um, 
So it makes it a little confusing, the people's statements. I swear there's a local PD supplemental report in there on that page that says that the fitted sheet was at home. But we see it in survey at the crime scene. So I'm very confused by that. I'll show you guys that too. I don't know if it's a typo because then it goes on to say, but the top sheet wasn't there. So I think maybe that officer got confused. Like what a fitted sheet is maybe. I don't know. Like it's going to be a big one. What up? Hello. In the bag. Yeah. Oh, so this was going to be the worst one, smell wise. Mm. So that one's the one that needs to go by itself. Yeah. I know there's much dirt on it. Uh, no, I'll just throw it on this one. I mean, theoretically, there should be maybe if Chris dug the hole and did all this himself, you know, his uh, hair possibly fell in there. Even beard hair falls out. They could have found some of that on Shanann through their struggle. But yet we have never even heard anything back about him being connected. Not saying that he didn't. I'm just saying as far as it goes, as you know, processed evidence, it, we just don't have it. So this dirt being shown, anything that was found, we just don't know. Uh, yeah, just hold the bag. Make sure it gets on there. The problem, Planet Chase, is the, the confessions 
were that Shanann killed the girls. So that was the confession that he was arrested on. And then he was told you're going to get the death penalty. So he signed a plea deal, you know, admitting to it all. Then he confessed and we've gone through how his, you know, confessions match, you know, a little bit of what happened, but not really match the evidence of the scene. Um, he's talked about how the kids were strangled. They weren't strangled. They were manually smothered. Um, just, just some things that kind of make you scratch your head a little bit. And for me, um, in most true crime community, like we like to rely on, you know, DNA evidence and digital forensics, you know, cell phone and all that. Oh no, you're fine. You're just not the only person who says like the confession aspect. And I, obviously I see now that you were like being sarcastic, sarcastic because like, <laughs> Confessions obviously aren't the best form of evidence. So now I get that you were just being sarcastic, but I do get those comments a lot. So I guess now I <laughs> explained it for future comments in that um, realm. Um, it would have been nice to know, you know, that this all pointed to towards Chris, like everything found at the scene, found in this dirt um, and all that. But it, I think that that's what makes us a huge rabbit hole is, is we just... There's so many other people that are linked to this that have lied in interviews and shouldn't have been there. Um, and he's also made statements about connecting other people at times. So it's just, I think you understand why <laughs> sometimes I feel the need. No, you're fine. It's not you that triggers me. It's that people think that him confessing actually just wraps up the whole case in in one bow and then that's it. Um but now I think it's funny that like I got on this tangent and you were just being sarcastic. <laughs> so sorry, guys, we'll get back to this evidence locker view. Um, and I did find that part in the discovery that I wanted to talk about. I should, I'll just read it right now. So it goes on to talk about the crime scene. Um, CBI is on the scene and it says... Um, Dave Yoakum, who assisted in the previous search of the residence, provided me a copy of the photographs of the sheet located in the trash can. CSA Yoakum provided me the photographs via email, and I compared the sheet in the photograph to the sheet on the ground of the well site and determined that they had the same printed pattern. I then physically checked the sheet and determined that there was nothing underneath. So no toys, no blankets, like Chris said there would be. Um, there were dirt stains on the sheet, including a large area of dirt stain with patterns that appear to be from the sheet being dragged along the ground. Photographs were taken of the sheet on the ground and of the stains on the sheet with my cell phone. So again, we have a picture of a CBI agent holding the sheet up, but I've never seen these ones like this, um, the zoomed in pictures of the stains on the sheet. So I don't know, but to me, I just wonder in this, in this, um, evidence video, why we don't see the fitted sheet and, and whatever happened to, you know, that fitted sheet, there should be something related to decomposition. I mean, that happens instantly. So if it is something like the district attorney saying, you know, it happened at the house four in the morning you would think there'd be something kind of related to um, death or urination or something like that on that fitted sheet. But that got halted, too. And we don't have any information about what was found on it besides that one CBI report stating that it just looked like it was dirt from being dragged. Go ahead and ask just how they want it. I think they were under the impression it was uh, they were a little bit different. They were like extended, so mm -hmm. we can extend this out. So let me make sure if he wants his drape over because he said not to have it touched so it doesn't mold up. Oh, on it now. Yeah. Hey, Dave. So on the dry, dry ones. So it's not long enough or it's not big enough for us to extend it the whole way. We can drape it. So he's calling Baumhofer right now. 
bit over, um, but some of it, like towards the bottom, might be touching. I don't know if that's going to affect it at all. Okay, try to extend it out. Okay, yeah, it might hit the floor, yeah, and then it might, uh, long-wise, it, it doesn't look like it's going to fit all the way, so the ends might be folded up, too. I mean, I'll try to prevent as much as possible, but that's that's yeah. that's going to be, because of the sheets, too, it's going to be long. Yes, Melissa. She said that skunk smell was NK smoking a joint. Remember, there was a lighter on the passenger side door. She had skunk weed. And remember, at the um, one of the canine searches, this is something that CDT has always pointed out. Um, Jane, with her dog, goes into the office. And remember, we've gone through this, got a whole live stream about it. The, the appearance of the office. Why was it so scattered around, etc.? It just kind of stands out like a sore thumb compared to the rest of the neat house, including the kids' rooms. But why, you know, she said it smelled like there was, she said, do people smoke weed? Or she said marijuana. And, you know, because she was saying, she was saying something about smelling it in the office. So I just think that's interesting that, you know, he's kind of saying in that prison interview that there's like a skunk smell in the truck at the time and that it was Shanann releasing her, you know, bowels. And, you know, not only is none of that described by the CBI agent besides the dirt, um, we don't have that sheet ever on scene here in this evidence locker. It's just kind of weird. Okay. All right. Yeah, there was just yeah, I was more more than pretty that that way it doesn't get mold up if it crumples in that little thing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. All right. yeah. Okay. And then with the dirt, did you want me to just put that in the same bag or um, put that in a different bag? The dirt? Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. Once we hang it out, the, yeah. But there, there was like a big lump of dirt, though. There's a huge one. I just wasn't sure if you wanted to keep all of it, some of it. Okay, you want that in plastic or in paper? Was... <laughs> Jay asked, "Did they ever find a roach, or do you think NK held it?" I I don't know. Like. And the fact that somebody tossed a beer can and then went back for it, I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, she goes back for roaches that she tossed out the window in that neighborhood. Who knows? You know what I mean? <laughs> so, I'll do paper. Okay. Mm. Me too, Tony. Okay, so you want to put that in a... Okay, so this, it's quite a bit though, that's what I'm saying. Like if, if I throw it on the floor, it's, it's, it's quite a bit of dirt that's left on it. Yeah, are you saying the, the one that... Honestly, I, I feel like this is an instance where Baumhofer should have been there. And I, I don't, I'm not trying to, you know, point the finger. Like, obviously, I don't know what it's like, but this guy just seems very confused. It just seems like a very huge case for the detective not to be on scene for like evidence, uh, anything with the chain of custody and procedures with crime scene, personally. Okay, try to extend it out. Yeah, 
Okay. Yeah, it might hit the floor, and then it might. Um, long wise, it, it doesn't look like it's going to fit all the way, so the ends might be folded up too. I mean, I'll try to prevent as much as possible, but that's that's yeah. that's going to be because of the sheets too. It's going to be long. Okay. All right. Yeah, there was just yeah, it was more more than pretty that that way it doesn't get molded up if it crumples in that little thing. Yeah. But, yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay. And then with the dirt, did you want me to just put that in the same bag or um, put that in a different bag? The dirt? Yeah. Um, no, the dirt really not that oh, yeah, he does say the dirt isn't really that important because we know where she came from. But what if, you know, there was like somebody's ring that slipped off or, you know what I mean? Like, who knows? Or what if there was a long piece of hair that wasn't connected to Shanann's long, dark hair? Yeah. Uh, yeah, once we hang it out. The, yeah, but there, there was like a big lump of dirt, though. There's a huge bar. I just wasn't sure if you wanted to keep all of it, some of it. Okay, so then now he's saying to, you know, make sure they have all the dirt swept up and kept. Okay. You want that in plastic or in paper also? I'll do paper. Okay. Mm. That's a good question, Bella. Because the basement bed was a place that one of the dogs showed interest. Do you remember that? Let me see if I can look it up real quick. It was the basement bed. That area, one of the dogs showed a little bit of interest. And I think that they got, they went to get a second um, confirmation from the other dog. I'll look that up while this plays. Okay. So you want to put that in a... Uh... Okay, because it, it's quite a bit, though. That's what I'm saying. Like, if if I throw it on the floor, it's 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 quite a bit of dirt that's left on it. Yeah. Are you saying the the one the all the dirt that I collected off of it? If I just throw that on the floor of the room? Yeah, I put it in the same bag that was in the sheet. I was just saying if you wanted to keep it, if you wanted to put it in a different bag, or... Okay, okay. Uh, all right, and then I'll throw it in there as well. All right. Yeah, we have nothing um, as far as evidence log I, of the basement sheets that I can see. If anyone ever finds in this discovery, like uh, something stating some sheets separate from the ones found in the trash and uh, on the floor. But where is it? This right here talks about the bet. Okay, so Jeff, Jeff is the one whose dog also found, picked up on one of their scents, the scent from the home down in that one area of the neighborhood too. So it says, Jeff stated that his dog showed interest in the unmade bed in the basement and an area just below the stairs, but did not do any final trained alerts. We exited the basement and went upstairs to the garage. No indicators were noted in the garage and we exited the home. So I'm just wondering, you know, the, the dog that showed interest in the unmade bed in the basement you know, that is a good question. Where is that log and where is, you know, whatever happened with that? Another thing that we just never got the final answers to. I think Shanann may have been lured to the basement, then taken out the back. And how many times, um, definitely, 
I think we've all thought something along those lines, especially when Chris kept emphasizing how big their basement windows were. And he's like, you can just walk in. It's like he was like saying that that's what people were doing. And remember, nobody lives behind them at that time. No cameras out back. No neighbor had cameras out back at that time. I really think so. I really think so. A lot of people think so. So at first we seemed like crazies, um, but now I'm like realizing that a lot more people are like, yeah, that seems. But of course, you know, Chris is where he needs to be. I just want to make that clear. You know, I'm not taking any blame off of him. Yeah. Fair enough. Okay. All right. Sounds good. Thanks. Bye. Yeah. I get specific orders. You did get specific orders? No, I had to get exact orders on one. Can't. Can't think by myself. <laughs> He said, "Just yeah, just drape it over as much as we can." Okay. Um, which way is the? Have hangers in that one too. Okay. That one's gonna get. And that one, does he want the dirt? Yes, Debbie. Um, one of the dogs picked up a scent from the home of one of the missing. So we the dog is given a scent from Shanann and the girls, and it picked up that one of those scents at a place further down the road or the street from them in the neighborhood. Yeah. Um, do you have a plastic bag? Or we can make one? I can make you a heat seal bag. Yeah. One of these. I'll fit this one. Just bigger. How big? Oh, let's just go right here. Debbie asked, do we ever get to see the fitted sheet in evidence? Nope. The only thing we see of the fitted sheet is one picture of a CBI agent holding it up at the site. And then, of, of course, all the drone footage of it that we've seen. But, I mean, when we see it in the drone footage, it, it looks just like the officer describes it. Just dirt, and it looks like at one part of it, it's super heavy, concentrated, and like it has, like, drag marks. So basically, we don't know if anything like um, any evidence would have shown that she was already passed in that sheet. We don't ever know. Like, I'm not saying that it couldn't have happened. I'm just saying we just never got any process done on that sheet. Hopefully it's sealed. 
Yeah, I mean, I get they just want the dirt to dry as well. So I'm gonna throw it in there. You want the dirt in there to dry? Yeah. Okay. And then. Okay. So, so what do we do? Throwing this in there. Okay. And so when we use these, they want everything in paper bags. So if you're putting the dirt in there, you're gonna need to leave it in there. Okay. Um, then... Do you want to know? Yeah, I was going to say, are you, are you okay with taking some here, yeah. paper bag? Do you want to, like, there. are you wanting switching bags? Or? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Just leave this to the sheets and then we got some dirt. Let me just pause it for a second because I think the timeline at Servi is important. It's always kind of led me before I even started looking into other people being involved. It just seemed impossible. The timeline that the district attorney was going to go off of. Um, Chris got out of the truck at 7 a.m. at Servi. No way. He dug the hole, buried Shanann, killed each girl and carried one. 100 feet to the oil bins and dump them in one hour and didn't get dirty or break a sweat. Um, impossible. He was also texting people that he was working with and that evidence we actually have seen. Paul brings up a good point too. He also went number two um, at one of the oil sites. Uh, you know, he was driving to different oil sites too. You know, there's just that timeline that for 12 jurors, I think it would have been hard to kind of prove beyond a reasonable doubt that that timeline that the district attorney was giving him was actually accurate. And it would have been hard to find a time of death for them, obviously, um, even Shanann being out there in the elements. But any time of death for us to go by, we don't have. So we don't actually know if it all happened the time it did. That's the word on the street. I don't know. Um, we just don't have anything past the discovery files, which don't show anything um, being processed as far as I think we have state fingerprints that were processed for one of the black bags or something found at Survey that had a, a partial fingerprint on it. They didn't even run the federal scan that we have access to. Um, I don't know if it was stuff that they were um, looking into, but they just didn't give us those public information. Like we only have what Weld County has given us. So, but from what we've seen, I mean, there's barely anything processed. I mean, we have partial autopsies. A lot of people say, no, so-and-so talked about the autopsies and they're public they're only partial. So a lot of things are just missing. They might have it, but they've never made it public. But they do blame the plea deal. They say that he stopped the investigation. Um, and that's case closed.
marker in handy? Is this one good? It doesn't have to get locked. Just I'm to gonna say, let me, close let me, it for now. Make sure. Yeah, I think this should, that one should be it. Um, yeah, I just have to label that somehow. I'll put the hanger or something. Just so it's specific, whoever grabs it, that that item goes with that bag. Watch, I'm going to need some of your stuff. I do find it interesting to see how they kind of deal with evidence behind the scenes, besides seeing it like on TV and stuff, um, the process where they hang stuff. I only want to go for like maybe another minute, guys. We can always watch the rest of this footage um, at any point. It's only a couple minutes, but I like to kind of do it at uh, an hour and a half.
<laughs> I think that's a perfect um, way to stop this, Teresa, with something a, a little light. Um, cause obviously this case is super heavy. That's why I kind of only like to go for an hour and a half too, because it just, it's very draining kind of going through stuff, um, in this case, but we can always do this again, obviously next Thursday, and we can definitely dig into other aspects of the case like we do every Thursday. So thank you guys so much for being here and thank you everyone for the well wishes. Um, yeah, brown bikini, brown house. So thanks, guys. And I appreciate all the comments in chat. And we will um, be here tomorrow night covering Madeline Soto. Uh, obviously been following the updates in that case. So if you guys want to continue conversations, we'll be covering that case tomorrow night around the same time. So I hope to see you guys there. And thank you to my moderators and everybody that donated. And hit that like button. And I'll talk to you guys very, very soon.